Bitcoin is getting impossible to ignore at this point. When you start to put all the little pieces together, it's absolute insanity what is going on. And today I've got another raft of massive news stories for you that show exactly what I'm talking about. We have a massive bank in Germany, which is planning to sell Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies to their customers. We have a new country adopting Bitcoin today, we have whales gobbling up Bitcoin like it's going out of freaking style, man. You can't ignore Bitcoin anymore. Anybody who does, well, you're doing it to your own freaking detriment. In today's video, I want to go over those news stories with you, as well as, of course, taking a quick look at what is happening in the markets. My name's Lark. Every day I make videos talking about cryptocurrency investing. If you do like that topic, you like to stay up to date with what's happening in the fast cryptocurrency industry. Smash on that thumbs up button if you would. Please, takes just one second. So thank you very much for doing that. By the way, every single week, my team and I make Wealth Mastery. It's a cryptocurrency investor report. We talk about NFTs. We talk about DeFi. We have altcoin reviews, token sales, airdrops, much, much more. You can sign up for free using the link down below in the description. And you can even get a seven-day free trial for our premium version as well. So check that out. Now... The price of Bitcoin, one of our favorite topics here on the channel, of course. The price of Bitcoin, man. We gotta, we love it. We love it. What are you doing today, old, old man Bitcoin? Well, Bitcoin today is doing basically whatever the heck the stock market is doing today because that's the kind of situation that we are in right now. The correlation of Bitcoin to the stock markets is redonkulous, but there it is. So the Dow and the S&P 500 book sharpest declines in nearly two weeks after Fed's pal signals a half point interest rate hike is likely in May, which the market already knew this. We knew, we knew that he was going to raise the interest rate by half a, a, a point. Why, why, why markets? Why must you react like this? We knew it was coming. He said that it's going to come. And yet the markets still freak out because the markets are redonkulous. That's why. Come on, markets. Anyway, you can see here Bitcoin did get up to about uh, $43,000 today before coming all the way back down to, of course, kiss our little trend line right here. Hello. And, of course, bounce back up from $39,700 to the current price of just a little over $40,000. Now that for this number where we at right now, $40,500 approximately, this is basically the number that Bitcoin has been at the entire freaking year. It's basically been our average price for all of 2022, right around this $40,000, $41,000 mark. Sure, it's gone a little bit higher. Sure, it's gone a little bit lower, but basically we're in the middle. The entire year, we've just got back to square one, basically. Uh, Bitcoin, you're funny, man. Still looking potentially like we could have a bullish crossover on the MACD in the coming days. Although, it is worth pointing out here that can always go lower. Can always go lower. Until that confirms, it's not confirmed. <laughs> Let's just put it simply. So we'll keep an eye on that, obviously. I am, of course, encouraged that we are maintaining this uptrend here for Bitcoin. And remember, we can come all the way down to the bottom wicks to really still be in that uptrend. So that could bring us all the way back down to potentially uh, $37,500. But I think at this point, I'd really like to see us staying above $38,500 just to keep that situation of higher lows in effect. We shall see, of course, what transpires over the weekend. The markets, again, lots of fear in the market, lots of uncertainty in the market, lots of macro risks in the market from the Federal Reserve to recession fears to what's happening in Ukraine, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Lots of stuff weighing very heavy on the markets. And even when we know, when we know what's going to happen, like the Federal Reserve raising the interest rates by 0.5% in May, they said they were going to do it in the minutes that came out. And then Jerome Powell comes out and says, yeah, we're probably going to do that. And the market loses their minds, man. Shh, markets. Anyway, that's the price today. And what's happening otherwise? What's the big news that's impossible to ignore? Well, one of the things is that we are continuing to see the accumulation of protocols of Bitcoin. Now, this over time 
puts a lot of Bitcoin out of circulation. So Terra announcing things are going to get spicy real soon. Barra's beware. Tagging UST and BTC, meaning that Terra is probably about to start buying some more freaking Bitcoin. Now, at the time of recording, they had not done that yet. They may be doing that soon. This is the Luna Guard, uh, Foundation Guard Bitcoin wallet address. Currently has 42,530 Bitcoin in it, worth about $1.7 billion. So they haven't put any new Bitcoin in there yet, but I think over the weekend we could watch for potentially some more Bitcoin to be coming into that remember they still have about 1.5 billion dollars to spend so they're probably going to approximately double that they're not going to get quite to 100,000 bitcoin with their initial three billion dollars that have been greenlit to buy up bitcoin but they'll get close they'll get to like 80,000 82,000 bitcoin or something like that which is obviously a heck of a lot of bitcoin now all that bitcoin once it goes in Probably not coming back out because remember, they're buying it to back the UST stablecoin with a hard asset. So pretty cool stuff right there. We'll be watching to see those purchases coming over the weekend. Be curious to see if the new round of buying by Terra will start pumping the market up as it has in previous times. So keeping an eye on that. And it's not just Terra buying Bitcoin either. We had this, this person here who bought 6,018 6, Bitcoin worth a quarter billion dollars over on Coinbase and then took it off and dumped it into their cold storage wallet. Which one of you did this? Which one? It was you, wasn't it? It was you. I know it was you. Shh, out here buying a quarter billion dollars of Bitcoin again? Man, come on, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's a, that's a stack of Bitcoin, dude. Who did this? Who did this? I love it. Whales keep on buying Bitcoin. The demand is still there and we don't have retail demand. So if you're wondering, well, Lark, okay, Terra's buying Bitcoin and this random whale's buying Bitcoin. Why is the price not pumping, man? Shouldn't we be on the moon? Where's my new all-time high? Retail's not here in force right now. You need a retail mania in order to push the prices up. And right now, retail money is worried about inflation, they're worried about the state of the markets. They're worried about, you know, am I going to have a job in a few months? All this kind of stuff. There's a lot of fear in the markets that's really affecting retail investors. But the big money, the smart money, the money that can be buying is buying Bitcoin. And yeah, there's lots of small buyers still buying Bitcoin too. It's not just, you know, whales who can buy it a quarter billion dollars at a time. There's lots of small buyers continuing to buy Bitcoin at this stage. But we don't have that that flood of interest coming into the market right now. We're just steadily accumulating, steadily building, steadily moving forward, which is a good thing, if you ask me. Now, let's get into this news because it's an absolute doozy. The second biggest bank in Germany is applying for a cryptocurrency license. It's a pretty damn big deal. Germany, of course, one of the world's biggest economies, and this is the second biggest bank in one of the world's biggest economic powerhouses. They have applied for license to allow them to be able to sell Bitcoin to their customers, buy it back from their customers, of course, and to custody that Bitcoin for their customers. Not just Bitcoin. Bitcoin and, of course, top cryptocurrencies. Imagine you'll see them selling Bitcoin and Ethereum and a couple other top coins to people. But this is big. This is big. These kinds of adoption stories are what move the needle in the long term because this essentially is a massive fiat on-ramp. One of the world's most important economies and one of the most important banks within that economy is opening up the doors, of course, as soon as they get their license approved, which has not happened yet. But once they do get their license approved, they're going to open up the doors for all of their customers to be able to buy, sell, and store Bitcoin at the bank which means that opens up trillions of dollars of potential money that can come into the market. You need as many fiat on-ramps as possible in order to get the price to continue to move up. Because the next time people start talking about Bitcoin again, start getting interested in Bitcoin again, then they're going to realize, hey, wait a second, I can just go down to my local bank. I don't have to start a Coinbase account. I don't have to buy an ETF product. I can just go to my bank where I've been banking for my entire life 
and buy some Bitcoin and they're going to hold it at the bank for me. Not what I would want to do, but I understand why some people do want to do that. Big, big story. I love this kind of adoption news. Everything we can do to make it easier for people to access Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies is a good thing. Final story for today. The Bahamas is the latest country to roll out a major piece of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency adoption. So the Bahamas has announced you can now use Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies to pay your taxes in the island nation. Nice. I like it. I like it a lot. Now, look, the Bahamas is not the world's biggest economy by any means, but this is a major adoption story. Now, they didn't make it, you know, legal tender. You can pay for in all the shops and stuff like that. But the fact that they're allowing you to pay your taxes in Bitcoin is awesome. And of course, this is part of their initiative to make the Bahamas into a major cryptocurrency hub. See, a lot of countries pushing for that right now. And Bahamas already has a, a long and historied, uh, storied reputation of being an offshore destination for a wide variety of companies. We see FTX, one of the world's biggest cryptocurrency exchanges. They've headquartered themselves in the Bahamas. So we see a lot of um, interest already from the financial sector in the Bahamas, a lot of crypto companies, poker companies, etc., different financial companies have gone to the Bahamas. So now these companies who might be operating in crypto already can now pay their taxes in crypto. It's great adoption news. I'd like to see Bahamas go even farther. Let's, let's allow it for payments across the island. That would be even cooler if you ask me, but the fact you can pay taxes using Bitcoin in the Bahamas, it just makes it real on a whole nother level. And this is the exact kind of adoption stories that we need to really adopt a global Bitcoin standard. And that is the exact direction that we're moving in. You can't ignore Bitcoin anymore. Banks are adopting it. The biggest banks in the world. Countries are adopting it. Billionaires are talking about it. People are gobbling up massive amounts of Bitcoin. And even though we don't have that retail mania right now, it actually means that now is the perfect time to be paying attention to the cryptocurrency market. But hey, those are just my two Satoshis for the day. You let me know what you think about any of this news down below in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching today's video and peace out till next time.